Welcome, welcome. Hello, world of YouTube. We are dialing in here from our hotel room in Germany. So <laughs> forgive us for the blank wall and no view of the pool from our other vlogs that we've had on the channel. That you might be used to, yeah. Well, thanks so much for dialing in. We are doing our first live stream. We are super excited to be here and thank you for dialing in again and for supporting us. There will be more and more people rolling in, some will leave, it's all good, it's just the nature of a live stream. And we already see lots of questions rolled in here in the chat on the right side. So if you have any questions, then please put them in the chat. We also received a lot of questions from the comments in the previous post that we did in the community board. So we'll go through those too. We cannot promise that we will get to all the questions, but we will try depending how much time you have to hang out with us. Yeah. We have some water here. Maybe you grab a coffee and uh, we, we get started. <laughs> exactly. So first we're really excited that we can actually use our filming equipment and our cameras to be doing the live stream today. Um, I don't know if you want to talk more about the setup because I can't really explain it that well, but yeah. it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, so we are not using our laptop camera. That's really just being used right now to go online. But we are, in fact, using our real cameras that we also film our classes with. Uh, it's not going to be 4K. It's just full HD, depending what resolution you, are, uh, you have access to. But we are using our real cameras. We are using a microphone. And we have it all put together and then plugged into the laptop with a, uh, it's called a switching board from Blackmagic. They provided that to us. Thank you, Blackmagic, for providing that. And we actually have set up a second angle where you can see how it looks here. So I can just switch. This is currently our setup. So we are here on this couch. <laughs> Super fancy. <laughs> uh, in, in our white hotel room currently. But um, so we got them the microphone here for the two of us. We will try it out for now. We are not using lapel microphones, maybe in the future. But uh, got that going for microphone. We have here our main camera. And then, of course, this is our second camera that you see right now. And then all of it is just connected to this board that I have here. And I can just switch between the camera angles, which is really, really easy to do. So I'm switching back to the main camera, back to the second angle. So this is going to be very useful for us. And we actually have been using this um, for a few weeks now on our Patreon monthly live streams. So if you want more like this, more like what we're doing right now, then on Patreon we do this every single month and we answer all of your questions. But now the first time on YouTube. Yeah, and now the quality is so much better because the first few live streams we did on Patreon <laughs> was one with our laptop and two with fairly shoddy internet, and it was also kind of dark in Bangkok. So on the screen, the resolution was so terrible. Flo said we looked like a couple of potatoes. So now uh, yeah. it's new and improved. We are polished and shiny, and you can probably see us so clearly. You can see each hair and each pore. So this is about the best quality we can give you for a live stream. We are very grateful for this since we, of course, always want to improve our quality. If you look way back in our channel, the first videos and how they look now, and if you compare the two, you see yeah. some improvement in the quality. And it's our goal to always keep improving. And this helps a lot for live streams. I like this angle a lot so you can see what's going on. I feel like it's like a, a podcast, or like a filming yeah, studio. It's, it's behind great. the scenes now. Yeah, behind the scenes. Yeah. There's a lot of secrets going on. So again, <laughs> so again, thanks uh, Black Magic for providing this to us. Um, check out those guys. If you don't, don't know them, here I have a sticker, Black Magic Design. If it's focusing, oh, it is. Yeah, maybe it's flipped for you, but we will link them below in the description, and uh, maybe also mention them and use them in future videos. This is also very useful if you are teaching live classes. If you are a teacher and you're teaching live. You can actually set up two angles. And then if you have someone that can switch between the angles or yourself, super easy to do. Yeah. And from the switching board, and then I'm done talking about this. I'm just super excited about um, 
we're actually not getting any money from them from mentioning the brand, but I'm just super stoked about it. That we you then plug a USB C, a USB C goes out into the laptop, and then that's it. It detects it as a camera, as a webcam, and also it detects the audio. So it's super easy. We had an uh, uh, interview the other day for a online event, and we were a little bit short on time, so I actually put this all together in just five minutes. It was amazing. It wasn't nerve-wracking at all. Not at all. <laughs> okay, maybe just for the first minute, and then Flo plugged everything in, and then it was good, and then we had four minutes to chill and meditate before we went live. That's important. So it, was, it was great. And also, if you're um, curious about any of the other equipment that we use, even down to the cables and the microphones and camera lenses, everything. We uh, have different kits available that we've put together. So it's basically a list of, I don't know, 100 or 150 different products and items that we use. And one of our kits is actually called, um, what is it? It's like starter yoga teacher online pack. Online yoga, teach or yoga teaching starter kit. <laughs> yeah. So that. if you are thinking of starting your own YouTube channel and you are a yoga teacher. Or any other like fitness or actually yeah. any form of YouTube channel, it's probably yeah. useful to get that equipment. So uh, we have linked, or we will link after this um, below, our kits and any other links of stuff that we mention throughout this live stream. So it'll all be down below in the kit. It's, it's also in the description of all the videos we have already up, or at least the latest ones. Make sure you check the description. We actually put a ton of information there. It's not just subscribe and check out this video, but also lots of resources on our website uh, to maybe answer your question. So there's lots of questions rolling in. I see the screen is moving a lot. You have a couple of questions here. We Maybe we scroll all the way up to the top. Again, welcome. If you just dialed in, we are so happy you're here. And we will now go through your questions. And uh, we apologize already in advance if we get do not get to your question. Next time in the live stream, hopefully we'll, we will get to your question. So we hope you come back. Yep. And we are currently live streaming from Germany, from uh, Stuttgart, from our hotel room for those that just joined. Again, welcome. We'll also try to keep our answers <coughs> fairly short. So if uh, the question if you don't really care about what the answer is, <laughs> or if the question is not pertinent to you, then um, we'll only spend a minute or two on each answer. Um, and if you know our yoga lifestyle videos, we always say two minutes, and then each video is like several. So the good we, old we days. really will try to keep it short. The good old days of yoga lifestyle. <laughs> we'll bring it back again. We, we promise. We have lots of ideas for, for them. Yeah. We have so many ideas. Yeah. So much is coming. I just saw one question where someone asked, can you also publish the kit information in your Insta links from Chris P Yoga or Chris Pi? Uh, thanks for asking. Yeah, if you go to our Instagram and then link in bio, and there you will find the all the kit information and so much more. And the secrets to happiness and the secrets to life are also hidden. <laughs> behind the link in bio in our Instagram. <laughs> so if you don't follow us yet, then please do that. I thought you were going right. to say the secrets to that are hidden between mm -hmm. the gaps in our thoughts. And well, that too, yeah. But, you know, link in bio is... Link in bio is... Second to that. All answers right. it all. First question, Flo, are you German? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm from Germany. I grew up here and lived here for about 25 years, and then I moved to California. Yep, I'm German. Um, what do you drink during your fasting hours? I feel like this is an interview. I know, right? Maybe <laughs> I should ask 10, and then you should ask 10. Okay. We're not quite sure how to do this. We haven't done a live stream before, so we'll just kind of play around with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so what do we drink during our fasting hours? During the fasting time, and there's lots of confusion always, fasting means you're not eating anything, you're not drinking anything with calories. So when people say, yeah, I'm fasting, but I just had some nuts, you're not fasting. You broke your fast and this is not fasting. If you say you're fasting, but then you had coffee with some milk, you are also not fasting. This is not a fast. A fast is no calories, zero calories. And so when while we are fasting, we drink black coffee, 
tea, mostly herbal tea and water. We stay away from any sodas or any zero calorie soda drinks because they turn on your system. So you can also break your fast with that, although it has zero calories. So we like to keep things very natural and simple. Mm -hmm. Coffee, tea, water. Once in a while we have um, vegetable broth. Yeah. Um, it's basically just seasonings in water <laughs> and uh, has also has some salt and some minerals. So that's what we usually do if it's a longer fast um, or in the first day or two or in moments where we feel like we need to break it and we need to eat, then we'll have some broth and it always does the trick, holds us over. That is only important if you're fasting for more than three days or three plus days then, or, or maybe four, then that's important. If you just do a one day or two day or intermittent fasting, you don't need any veggie broth. Your salt levels and minerals will be fine. Cool. Next question, please. Next question. Um, will, we, will we be teaching any workshops in Southern Germany in the near future? So we'll kind of answer that and also encompass the answer for all workshops and retreats and events that are upcoming. Um, so to take a step back, if you're new to this channel or if you missed um, our last updates or if you don't follow us on, on the gram, um, then you um, probably don't know that we had to cancel the rest of our retreats this year and all of our workshops, all of our events. So 2020, all events, all live events canceled. So um, we are super bummed about that because we quit our jobs to set out and travel the world and meet all of you. And of course the pandemic happened and we had to shift, uh, shift gears. So we are, yeah, taking it easy and working on a bunch of other projects behind the scenes instead. So we're sorry that we're not able to teach events with you this year, but we do have some awesome solid events lined up for 2021 and we'll be, Yay. yeah. We'll be uh, actually announcing that tomorrow is when the first announcement rolls out for our 2021 yoga retreats. And we have four destinations picked and locked in. So I will be um, finalizing the retreat websites this evening <laughs> and clicking through and making sure all the links work and everything. And uh, tomorrow we'll be first posting that and announcing it to our Patreon supporters where they are gonna get 48 hours heads up um, before we announce it to anyone on our newsletter. And then uh, a week later is when we'll announce it on our Instagram and go public with it. So if you want first dibs on knowing what it is, jump onto Patreon. Um, the other nice perk with Patreon is uh, not only do you get two days advance notice to pick the best rooms, but you also get, if you, depending on what tier you book, if you book the second tier, or the third tier, then you get a 10 and 15% discount to the retreat. So that's pretty huge and uh, basically pays for your Patreon <laughs> um, uh, membership up until the retreat. So um, if you plan on coming to any of the retreats, then I'm your financial advisor and I'm telling you to sign up for Patreon. So at least you get free handstand program, free meditation, free long classes and Q and A's. And then after the retreat, if you want to cancel it, no obligation to stay, you'll actually just save some money by joining us on Patreon. <laughs> Shh, you didn't hear that from me. Yeah. <laughs> and, so. then, uh, and then newsletter is going to be in two days. And in the newsletter, we'll also give an early bird discount. Yeah. And then a week later is when we go live to the public. So that's how you can find out the behind the scenes stuff. And also on our newsletter, we send out about every one to two months, like updates that we have going on and where we're going, what projects we're working on and yeah, goals and our fears and our loves and everything about us too. So that's also a little more behind the scenes with us. Another update is that today we updated the yoga playlist of the month. So if you don't know about this yet, we have a Spotify channel, I think it's called, or account where we have 30 or so yoga playlists. So these are the playlists that we use. 50 now. 50? Yeah. Okay, 50. Correction, it's 50, which uh, which is amazing because when we started teaching, we always struggled finding some good music that we liked. So we, of course, then 
signed up on Spotify and created our own playlists. And over the last years of teaching, we have now 50 playlists there. And there is one playlist in particular, which is the yoga playlist of the month, which you can follow and it just stays and you follow that one playlist only. And we update it, re updates it every single month with new tracks. And it's usually about an hour practice. So if you want to use music for your classes, as we have mentioned already in a few of the videos, you can go to Spotify, check out the playlist of the month and also the other 50 playlists there and just have that play in the background. When we do that, when we practice, for example, to our own videos on YouTube, because we want to review them before we publish and we still want to listen to music, then we usually put the volume of YouTube on half and then have the volume on Spotify on full. So you still get the cues, but the music is more dominant than, than, the, uh, than the cues and the, the talking. Nice, uh, nice trick there. While well, we're already talking about it, about the videos and the channel, a lot of people say, please stay longer for Shavasana. We are now in the newer videos staying a bit longer with you there. But a lot of people say this or ask for it because then the new video starts. And this is really about your settings in your YouTube player. So if you go to your YouTube player settings, you can turn off autoplay and then the video will just end. And then it will not go to the next drum and bass video or whatever 200 push-ups workout with techno music, whatever you are usually watching. So it will not happen. It will just end and you can just stay and maybe even fall asleep and have a nice Shavasana for half an hour. Perfect. But we hear you and we are staying a little bit longer with you in Shavasana too. Okay. So let's see. Cover the yoga retreat topic. Uh, by the way, hopefully everyone is doing okay in the pandemic situation. It's still a thing. It's also more a thing now in Europe. And we just want to send you lots of love and health and positive thoughts to stay positive and healthy in these difficult times. All humans in the world are in this together. And we all just do our best to keep the vibration up and, and stay healthy. Okay. I'm not this fast at reading. Uh, how many hours a day is yoga recommended? Can we do one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening? Maybe you talk about that. Great question. Um, well, to start with, we're assuming the yoga you're asking is about yoga asana. So movement and poses and uh, we kind of go back to it, you've probably already heard, but you really have to listen to your own body. It depends so much on your own goals and your own motivation, your own stamina, everything that is within your own physical realm. Uh, and that's really gonna determine how long you can be practicing on the mat. It's also things that are um, that you can't control, like your kids are around or you have to go to work or other things that are holding you back. But if you really had full open time to roll out your mat and practice for as long as you wanted, then go for it. Practice until you're sore or until you're tired, until you just feel like you got what you needed out of the practice. For Flo and I, we, uh, we practice between one and three hours in the morning and then our evening practice is, yeah, usually just restorative yin meditation. Um, so we, at least for us, we usually practice strong in the morning and then the evening we practice more calm um, because it builds us up, gets us energized and also um, practicing in the morning for us really, um, yeah, makes us feel better in our body. We can stretch and um, work on all of our joints and, um, you know, get rid of all the fuzz <laughs> in our fascia and it just makes us feel better in our body, but it's not the same for everyone. Some people really like practicing strong at night. In fact, when we used to teach in studios in the Bay Area, we were teaching a 7 p.m. power flow and it was like 90 minutes and it was always busy and people loved it. And for Flo and I, we were always wondering like why so many people would come um, because it's not even really a time where we would be practicing super strong. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's up to you. Um, we definitely recommend that you rotate your practices. So if you're um, 
actually we get this question a lot for yoga yoga for men series is that uh they will do day one video video one or episode one and then the next day episode two and next day episode three and then they email us when they're on episode nine day nine and they're like how do you keep up with this i'm so sore like i don't understand and um particularly that series is not meant to be a day sequenced series it's meant to um use it when you want to go strong go hard but then you also need to supplement your practice with more chill days, more yin, more restorative and relaxing. And you really need the balance of both to um, not only feel good in your body, but also on days that you're sore, you need to give your body time to recover. And by giving yourself recovery days and restorative days, you can actually uh, get farther on your physical goals than you would if you're just going hard at the paint <laughs> every single practice for a month. But if you were to break it up with restorative days in between, um, your body and your muscles will heal and grow faster, believe it or not. So um, definitely encourage that you take rest days and take yin. So it's kind of a long-winded answer, but depends on your body. <laughs> and um, yeah, there's really no limit. Flo and I practice like two to four hours a day. And we've done that for several years, actually. Even when we were working in corporate, we would still wake up early, 4.30 or 5, and practice before we went to work. So um yeah depends on what feels good for you of course always avoid pain avoid injury but always come back to the question like why am i stepping on the mat what is this doing for me and uh just make sure that your intention is in alignment with what you're physically and mentally doing and then whatever you want my answer to this is that you are probably talking about yoga asana and that's also what Bree just talked about and uh, for that, I totally agree with what she said. But in besides that, yoga is way more than asana, and you can practice yoga all day. And in fact, the practice is all day. I would say every waking hour. So while you are awake, you are practicing yoga. If you leave the mat, the practice continues. It's about the internal, what's going on in the internal, how you move through life and how you act or interact with others and with yourself. So the practice really never stops. And that is hopefully something that we communicate in our channel, that it's a lot more than doing any poses or movements on the mat. Listen to the body, uh, but know that the practice does not end when you leave your mat. Exactly. If you're practicing that awareness, then yoga is all day, every day. Yeah. And even on days where you are not on your mat, you are still practicing. Someone asked uh, maybe a quick one before we go into this deeper one. Uh, let, let's try to also do the names. Um, Nibedita Behera asked, can you please tell us about weight loss and yoga and some tips? Basically, if you can lose weight with yoga and if it's possible, and yes, it is. It, uh, it is a wonderful practice that is can be very gentle for the body. And it also targets not only the body, but as we just talked about, also the mental and the deeper aspects of life and life itself, really, and to live a more present and full life. So you get a lot out of that there. If your, gain is, if your goal is weight loss, then yes, it is also a great practice but not on its own. So of course, weight loss and overall health is not just movement. It's not just meditation. It's also about sleep, which I think is very underrated. Uh, the sleep, how much you sleep, the quality of sleep and uh, increasing that quality of sleep. And of course, a big one is nutrition. So if you get all of these aligned and find a way that works for you to um, ba really balance sleep, nutrition, movement, and mindfulness, let's say, then you will also come closer to your goal of losing weight, whatever that goal is. So yes, it's absolutely possible, but it's not just workout or just doing movements. Thanks for liking my hood, my hoodie. Thanks, Eric, guys. Are you You're surprised so su it's not black? Yeah. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, it's actually the only item that I have in my wardrobe that's not black right now. Black or gray, I know, as you know. You, you 
probably really shocked people. They're like, what did you do with Flo? Who is that what guy? Happened, yeah. Who that? Yeah, who, who, who that guy? <laughs> what happened to him? Okay. I was just excited because now it matches my color theme with my Instagram account. So <laughs> now I can feature him in more of my photos. <laughs> So I have uh, my tablet here, just in case you're wondering. Um, I'm going through all these questions. It's just easier than to lean forward all the time, and then it's kind of out of focus. Uh, so I'm skipping through all the very nice messages from all of you that um, say thank you for the channel, thank you for the videos, thanks for doing live stream, and just checking in and saying hi. We, of course, see all of this, but we cannot uh, respond to all of it. Mm -hmm. But we want to say thank you for being here, and thanks for practicing with us, and thanks for participating in the chat. You guys are amazing we love that we can build and uh, such a great great um, community that's very supportive and very loving and we uh, read all the comments every day we respond to everything usually heart everything or if there's a questions question i respond to it um, that's usually me that's doing all the work on youtube and i read all your messages and i'm just always every day so happy about this supportive community that we have and everyone just helps each other, and it's amazing. It's yeah. very nice. OK, someone asked, uh, how do you find meaning in life? Uh, Arturo Hernandez Mendoza, thanks for asking. How do you find meaning in life? Mm. That's, a, that's a deep one. That is deep. I think by listening to your heart, <laughs> as kind of silly and simple as that sounds, I think your meaning kind of arrives and comes to you in those moments of stillness when the heart is speaking louder than the voice in your head and louder than what anybody else is telling you what to do or where to go with your life. Um, when you listen to your heart, then you just follow your path a little bit more closely. You're not on the extremes. And you're, um, yeah, by that, you're usually following your passions. You're doing what you love. And when you do something that you love, then that automatically creates meaning in your life. Um, when you wake up in the morning and you're excited for the day, then that's meaning. The, the question is, how do you find the meaning? And so when someone asks about finding, especially with something like this, I always have to say that the meaning is not something you find. It's already there. It's not something you lost. So you also cannot find it. It's already there. And oftentimes, we just forget about it because of all the things up here in our head and or all the gets things covered up from oh yeah all the things that are going on in your head and they're covering up the meaning and so by being more in stillness and being present you rediscover that meaning and the meaning in fact is to be present and to be and to be fully there in whatever you're doing how many yoga for men episodes will you be doing I will, uh, Philip Lane, thanks for asking. I will just keep keep uh, producing them. Uh, they're really fun for me, and they seem to be really fun for all of you guys. And it's part of my mission to get more men to step on the mat. More people in general is good, but my mission, of course, is to get more guys on the mat to practice. And uh, I will for sure keep producing those videos. I have not planned to stop anytime soon. so. If I say I will keep producing them over the next decades, then I think it's not uh, exaggerated. Yep. Okay. And can I throw in a little uh, asterisk with the yoga for men thing too? Yep. I'll keep this short um, because I think you spent a few minutes in episode nine explaining yoga for men. But uh, we just want to remind people that it's not a video that you have to only be a man to do. You can be any sexual gender and you can be taking those videos and practicing those videos. And on the contrary, if you're a guy that's on our channel and you only watch videos or strength training classes with flow, but you haven't taken any of my classes, then give it a try too. We actually teach quite similarly and uh, yeah. at least we think. And so give both of us a try, <laughs> whatever gender you are. Um, really the purpose of us naming those videos yoga for men is so that it, you know, so when guys go on YouTube and they search yoga for men, um, because they usually have it in their head that yoga classes are just to become flexible and it's a bunch of just stretching skinny women doing flexible things, then uh, they don't feel challenged or they feel like it doesn't align with them or it doesn't uh, resonate with them. 
So that's really the reason why we name those videos Yoga for Men. But we want to also remind you that it can be for anyone. And uh, there's really no problem. More men that step on the mat and do yoga, the better. So, What time do you go to bed and how many hours do you sleep? Thanks, Rebecca, for asking. We did a separate video on that topic. It's the yoga for the yoga lifestyle series that we did a few years ago. And since then, we haven't been very regular with creating those, but we will. We currently go to bed around 9 or 10, and we sleep for seven and a half hours. You want to know, you need to know with sleep that the body goes in sleep cycles and they're usually around 90 minutes long. So if someone says you need to, you need to sleep eight hours, it doesn't really make sense. And this is of course backed by science. We didn't make this up. The sleep cycles last 90 minutes. So eight hours is not a multiple of 90 minutes. So it doesn't really um, add up. So you would either sleep seven and a half or nine hours. In general, we suggest sleep six seven and a half or nine or more seven and a half works perfect for us and so we do seven and a half there's of course some days sometime uh, when we sleep nine sometimes we only sleep six but on average most days we sleep seven and a half works perfect for us and we invite you to try that out too now in addition to this if you for example want to try out the seven and a half but it takes you 30 minutes to fall asleep, then of course, when you go to bed and you know it takes 30 minutes and then seven and a half hours to go through all the sleep cycles, you want to set your alarm eight hours later. But if you if it only takes you five minutes to fall asleep, then you can set your alarm for seven hours, 35 later. And then you get up. Another thing while we're already talking about sleep is to avoid hitting the snooze button and it's best to just get up although it's hard if you do snooze once maybe it's okay sometimes you know it happens but if you do like snooze three four five times and it actually adds up to like half an hour or so of additional time in bed you can't really call it sleep then it's it's really no good yeah and you you want to really honor those sleep cycles with the 90 minutes otherwise you can get mentally a little bit or with your with your body and brain a little bit stuck into in the phases in between and then you feel for several hours kind of half asleep although you are somewhere already you're kind of very sleepy and you feel half a like more like a robot not really there and so you want to avoid that and really finish that sleep cycle and then before the next one starts you get up Otherwise, if you get caught in a sleep cycle like this, then what really helps is a cold shower. So if uh, you're not awake from your alarm, then cold shower in the morning, good tip. Okay. Apart from yoga and jiu-jitsu, do you do any other fitness activities like jogging or cycling? And the answer is no, we don't. We did a video about this. If we do anything else and if you lift weights and what else we do. And no, we don't. Our yoga practice is very hard. Our, our yoga asana movement practice is very hard, very strong. Uh, Jiu-jitsu practice is very hard. And it's enough for our bodies to get stronger, to stay healthy, to stay mobile, to increase our cardio. So there's no need for us to do anything else. We also think that although jogging and cycling can be fun, if that's the majority of things you do, it's also very one directional only, or you're moving only in a certain plane. It's not fully functional how the body is meant to move. So if you go for a run or jog every day, then you absolutely have to do something in addition. Otherwise your body will um, develop some compensations because you're always moving in in the same way basically and that's why you notice our yoga classes are all over the place and there's non-traditional movements in there in our live classes it's even more than on youtube because we of course have limitations teaching on video and um, we are all over the place and this is all based on functional movement how the body is really meant to move and how it moves the best and how it helps you to move better too yeah i would say there are two things in addition to BJJ and yoga that we do, I don't know if I would categorize it, but one is we walk a lot and we also go hiking every 
Yeah. I don't know, every weekend or every other weekend, we try to get out in nature and ground down. Usually we take our shoes off and we even walk barefoot in the woods um, to really connect with nature and, uh, and get outdoors. So I wouldn't call those hikes like strenuous by any means. Um, yeah, we'll usually take the whole afternoon and it's only like five or 10 miles. Um, but it is just getting outdoors and walking and moving our body. So that was one thing. And then um, we also do rock climbing occasionally, not as much as we would like to, yeah. um, as Good many point. of the gyms have been closed. Um, but yeah, we love rock climbing. I actually used to competitively rock climb in college. So I was like super into it. Um, but we haven't been able to do it uh, recently. So um, rock climbing is also a really good form of pulling. Um, and if you have seen our videos, we mention it a lot on Instagram and stories and blah, 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 that yoga is um, not perfect for you because there's one movement that is missing and that is pulling. So we recommend that you either do pull-ups if you um, have an opportunity to at your house or if you have a pull-up bar or if you're at the gym. Um, otherwise, rock climbing is great and even better because with rock climbing, you're really moving your joints in all sorts of different angles and you're not just staying static uh, with your movements um, or yeah, the angles of your joints and your muscles. So uh, if you can rock climb, that's awesome. We love doing that, but yeah, it's not very often. It's like once a month, maybe. It's mostly yoga, BJJ. You would love to do more, but um, yeah. we do just regular pull-ups, which, which is not uh, too interesting. Rock climbing is more fun couple questions while I just uh, look through this. <clears throat> I'll switch to this angle again. So much fun to switch between the two angles. It's awesome. A couple of questions I saw and then I will return the iPad to you so you can go through a couple of questions. Yeah. And maybe I will answer them also um, real quick. But of course, if you want to say something, go ahead. Um, com commoner, also sorry guys if I mispronounce um, names asked that we inspired um, you, this person, can't really see the gender or anything, to do a teacher training. Uh, awesome job doing a teacher training and being inspired by us. Technical questions, do you not worry about overloading the hip joint when you sequence? And yes, we are very worried about everything overloading and there's actually lots of thought and anatomy and system and strategy that goes into sequencing our classes so yeah. we are absolutely worried about overloading any joint and not warming you up enough or in other words we want to make sure that you are warmed and warmed up enough that we up level correctly if there's a peak we prepare you for it and that we don't overdo on do it on any joints in the body basically and also not on any uh, muscles or anything else, especially the wrists are sometimes very weak for lots of people. So in uh, in short, yes, we are putting lots of thought into our sequences and this will be covered in more depth in our uh, yoga teacher trainings that we will be offering sometime in the future. You will learn everything about sequencing and how we sequence and what goes all into this. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Where would you like to travel next? Is Ukraine on the list? It's currently not on the list and we are actually currently not traveling. In Europe things get also more strict right now and all the countries around Europe are basically already closed. They're all risk areas where we don't want to go. There's even lots of risk areas and hotspots within Germany currently. So. For the next weeks and maybe the next month, we just stay put here. We just stay here and then we will see where we go. We don't really know where we're traveling next yeah. and what's coming up. But Ukraine is not on the list this time. Although you would love to grab a coffee. Coffee sounds always good. You can always uh, bring us to your country if you offer us coffee. <laughs> and we maybe, maybe, maybe come. Yeah. And if you want to stay up to date with our yeah. world tour slash unworld tour, um, then you can always check out our website. Also, the link is in the description, breatheandflow.org backslash world tour. And we also um, update that pretty frequently. So of course, right now it's like a lot of things are up in the air. I think we have like six countries listed that say maybe we'll go here. But yeah, we just don't know what's going on for the next um, month, especially for November, December. We're not quite sure. 
Um, so one is through the World Tour page, but two, also if you subscribe to our newsletters, then we uh, will usually announce where we're headed to next. So That's great. Okay, someone asked uh, Stephen Malone about um, what we eat when we are in our eating window, and we covered that briefly in our video in Thailand, but we are working on a new video where we talk about what we eat in a day, so that's coming soon. Stay tuned. Um, there was one more question that was very good, then I give it to you. Oh yeah, someone asked um, how we are doing with the channel and teaching online and teaching on YouTube and uh, mostly financially and when are we planning to return to our main jobs? And someone else also asked in the uh, post in the comments, uh, when we are done, when are we done teaching yoga and traveling and what do we do besides that and uh, this is our main job so we are both full-time yoga teachers we teach or we taught for many years in studios in california we taught retreats and workshops and at festivals and while we were all, while we were at the same time working full-time at tech companies as project managers. So it was a very busy work week, 50 plus hours at the full-time job and then teaching everything on the side. Also building up that YouTube channel on the side. Yeah. And we really liked our jobs, but we really loved and still love teaching yoga. So we build up both on the side, we build up our YouTube and our teaching and everything that we love, our passion on the side, so that one day, and that day was a year ago, we quit our full-time job and that then we right. teach full-time. Yeah. And so that's what we're doing now. Yeah. We have no plans to go back to any any other job. This is what we will do for the rest of our life. We have lots of plans, a big vision. The YouTube channel is only one a piece of the puzzle and there's many other things going on we're currently working on but that's that's all we do yeah. we we teach um, mostly online now but hopefully more next year and the years after when we can travel again and you can travel again yeah. in person yeah and we um if you if you want to learn more about us and our journey and about our certifications or really anything about us then you can also check that out on our website um, we have a lot more information on there too, um, but yeah, we're we're not going anywhere. So fortunately for you, you're stuck with us. As long as you stay sub subscribed, then <laughs> we'll stay in your face teaching you yoga for mm -hmm. many many decades down the road. So um, yeah, this is it. We we're yeah, in for the long long run. We're in for the long run, and yeah. we love it. We really love this practice. We love the healing process of it. The introspection of yeah, your soul and everything that you can do with it physically, it's really infinite what you can be doing with your body and how far and how deep you can go with your mind. And uh, we, it's like the more that we learn about yoga, it feels like the less we know because there's so many different avenues and the, um, the world of yoga is infinite really. So we're continuing to educate ourselves. We've been doing a lot of trainings and, um, yeah, learning more about things, about how the body moves, about trauma release um, programs and trainings and um, kin stretch training. We did back in April. So you'll see a lot more of the mobility uh, videos coming up on our channel as well. And uh, yeah, a lot more stuff, advanced anatomy and everything. We actually, at this point, we're signed up for, I don't know, three or four different trainings at the same time. So um yeah, we're kind of like sponges and we just want to soak in the world of yoga and then whatever we find to be the most meaningful information we're uh, regurgitating to you on this channel. So hmm. um, yeah, so we're not we're not going anywhere and we are certainly not going back to corporate. Yep, once. that's uh, absolutely a no. Yeah, now never. that we're CEOs, we, uh, we never. never want to have a boss again. Yep, we and... will never have a boss again. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Nope. Not happening. Okay, that's uh, is, is really good. Um, I'm actually still in the beginning of the question, so I think we have to glance a little bit more through and more go further down since people are still commenting. Sorry, guys, if we don't get to your question. Also, we had initially thought that we do this only for 45 minutes, but we also kept our evening open. So 
if you want to grab another coffee, then do that or tea or water and we just keep going for a little <laughs> bit longer. <laughs> uh, some uh, very specific question about uh, fasting and if coffee breaks the autophagy process and it does not, you can look more into it. It is not giving your gut a full rest if you do coffee, especially because of the caffeine. But the autophagy process is still happening while you are in ketosis. And uh, we recommend that you get those ketosis strips. You can measure your ketosis levels or your ketone levels and then um, see where you are at with your fast. But as far as we know, the coffee will not disrupt the autophagy process. Thanks for that very specific question. The autophagy is basically where your body recycles old and sick cells and renews itself so it gets basically stronger and healthier on cell level from within. It's one of the main benefits and main reasons why we do fasting. Thanks for that question. Um, yes, we have lots of information about all of the stuff we talk about in our link in bio on Instagram. So there's more info on Instagram too. Uh, really check out the website. There's a lot and our kit and the description in all the videos. There's a ton of information that hopefully answers your question. How did you guys meet? Was it love at first sight? Should we go into that question or maybe another time? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll keep it short. We, um, we met at a yoga class, actually. It was a class that I had been going to regularly. Uh, we were both students at the time. Neither of us were teachers yet. And uh, it's a class that I had been going to regularly. And uh, usually there's like 10 people in the class every Sunday. And for some reason, that random Sunday, nobody else was in class except for Flo and myself and uh yeah i was i was like pretty nervous i even told the instructor um because it was just the two of us so i was like what is going on right now like did he lock the door and like nobody else can come in or <laughs> <laughs> or what's going on and um yeah and i even like told the instructor i was like it's okay you don't have to teach like there's only yeah since there's only two of us like i feel kind of bad and you know, and she's like, oh, no, it's fine. We'll treat it more like a private. It's all good. And I was like, okay. And uh, yeah, so we practiced yoga. And it was actually Flo's first time doing yoga. And um, if you scroll back on his Instagram account, you see that he was really into weightlifting and bodybuilding and all of that. And so it was actually pretty hilarious in our first yoga class because this dude was dying. And uh yeah. yeah, it was very hard to take my first class, very challenging physically, and I was surprised. Couldn't hold his arms up in, in Warrior 2, Yeah, which is fine. I was not judging him. It was just shocking because he was so muscular, and then he couldn't hold his arms up. So. It was shocking for me, too, because I thought I'm very strong, and from lifting weights and bench pressing, you feel strong for that specific exercise, but function functionally for your whole with your whole body and holding a plank or holding your arms out, uh, it's just very different functional strength than like something very specific like bench pressing or biceps curls or something like that. Yeah. And so um, then but that's a different story how, how I got into yoga. And we actually have a video on that on YouTube, uh, how we started, yeah. but not how we met. But Yeah. Yeah. And then we went and got coffee afterwards and acai bowls. And um, yeah. Talked about the law of attraction and talked about the universe, the universe and, <laughs> and stillness and a lot more deeper stuff than where you're from and how many siblings do you have. And we skipped a lot of things and just went straight to the to the things we were really interested in and just let our hearts talk. And it was uh, it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And since then, uh, you know, we, we hang out sometimes. <laughs> we've, we've been hanging out <laughs> <laughs> once in a while we you know go to each other's house what house we sold everything we have yeah. no house we have no home <laughs> okay uh someone asked about um building muscle with your with yoga and do we have classes yes you can build muscle with it um you 
trigger the, the signals to grow muscle, to get stronger and to build muscle mass. And then of course it depends again on your sleep and what you eat, if that's really happening. But there are strong classes on our channel. There's also strength training classes on our channel. So we, rec we recommend you do those if, you, if this is your goal. Okay. How long should I do yoga before I start working on advanced poses? Anthony asked, uh, and again, I assume that with yoga you mean asana and movements. And in our opinion, there are no advanced poses. Every pose has infinite depth you can go into and explore mentally and with your breath. And the more you practice, the more you will probably discover this, that there's even in the poses that we sometimes call basic or simple, like a child's pose or Shavasana. Shavasana. Uh, it's actually one of the most challenging poses, I think, Shavasana, because mentally a lot of people are very challenged. So in our opinion, there's really no advanced pose from the, from the view of yoga as a mental practice. Of course, physically, there are some more challenging poses and that require some more openness of the body or some more strength, but that's also very relative. So it could be that based on your body structure, you will never be able to do a certain shape with your body, no matter how much you practice. And this is something that's really important to understand. Otherwise, you only get injured if you keep forcing your body in a direction it doesn't want to go and it will not open up because you might have limitations in your body. We all do. Our bodies are not the same. So you want to make the pose work for you and not fit the body into a certain shape. This is the old school traditional approach to yoga asana that gets many people injured and completely can mess up your body. And we want to stay away from this. We see it more as a modern approach to movement and still incorporate all the mindfulness and internal practices and breath work that yoga has to offer. But the physical practice, the asana movement practice has advanced a lot since uh, compared to, you know, very traditional styles. And so keep this in mind when you practice, it's also important to not get too caught up mentally with I'm not advanced because I cannot do lotus with my legs or I'm not advanced because I cannot do a handstand or something that all does not matter. You can be extremely advanced and not do a single pose ever in your life again or actually not do any poses and you can be a very advanced yogi because or very very strong or connected yogi because mental, mentally and from within you are very present. This is really what it's all about. Anything to add? You know, I wanted to add something. Um, but yeah, if, if you, yeah, well, we understand more what your question meant, but that's kind of our, our yogi response to it. But really, if you want to um, expand into those quote unquote advanced poses, it's the same answer we always give is to listen to your body and your body really knows its own limitations. It's usually the mind that is forcing it beyond. So yeah, we just encourage you to listen to your body. If you're in a, um, a certain pose and you feel like you could try something new or try a different variation or modify it in some way to make it feel better for you or to challenge yourself, then go for it. As long as you're avoiding any sensations of pain, then why not? And for Flo and I, when we first got into yoga, like we were of course playing around with arm balances and trying handstands and crow pose. And did we know what we were doing? No. <laughs> Should we have been doing those things? Probably not. But it doesn't mean that you have to like stay in the box until you like graduate to the next level or something. It's, it's not about that. It's about exploring movement in your body and playing around and having fun and um, staying safe. Someone asked, um... If I'm fairly new to yoga, should I focus, concentrate, should I concentrate on building strength and flexibility first? It kind of goes hand in hand with this answer. And uh, my answer is no, just keep practicing and focus more on meditation than anything else. Uh, someone else asked, since you're German flow, are you a Bundesliga fan, which is soccer? Uh, and who do you support? And no, <laughs> I am not a soccer fan. It's actually, uh, Let's just put it this way, I'm not, I'm not a fan at all. 
that's uh, I think that's enough. I'm not into it. I'm not supporting uh, anyone or any team or anything. It's more. I think I can generalize it to most sports that include a ball. I'm not really interested in. I think that, yeah, I think that that fits that generalization for me. <laughs> but thanks for asking. Um, what advice would you give a beginner yogi? Um, thanks so much for your videos, um, David. Keep practicing, keep showing up. As with everything in the beginning, it's very challenging. So already put, forget about any timeline or you want to be somewhere at a certain in a certain uh, certain date or in a, in a few months or something. Forget all about that. Just keep showing up. Enjoy the practice and especially focus on meditation and breath work. That's very very important, and you will gain the most benefit for your life out of meditation. Okay, maybe I'll do one more question and I'll give it to you. Do you have anything here on your computer? No, I can see. Someone asked about how do we start our morning and what time do we wake up? We have a video on that on YouTube. It's called uh, A Day in the Life in Quarantine. So it's uh, our day in the life while we were in Thailand in quarantine. It's still pretty similar right now, actually, especially since it feels like uh, quarantine or lockdown is back right now. So our day is very similar. We get up pretty early between 5 and 6 a.m. And then we have a yeah, like a couple hour morning routine. But check out that video on the, on the channel. Maybe I'll answer this um, yeah. question from Please. Aaron Goffin. Thank you for your comment to the post yesterday when we mentioned that we were going to be doing a live stream. Um, so she said, when you're not traveling the world, being superhuman and inspirational, can you be found, uh, what can you be found doing besides yoga? Very nice question. Thank you. Um, Same yeah, as, we, as before. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, we hike and we like to be outdoors and we drink coffee. We love traveling. Um, but to be honest, I mean, day in the quarantine video will probably show you most of it. Um, but we, yeah, spend a lot of our time working too. It's uh, a lot of the stuff that you don't see behind the scenes of content creators um, because you can only post so many photos of you on your computer again or you on your phone responding to comments again. So we limit um, sort of showing people like how much we're doing on the computer because for one, it doesn't matter. We're still just doing it because we love it. But, um, but yeah, we actually spend a lot of hours a day on the computer and uh, through our Instagram stories, maybe it looks like glamorous and that we're traveling all the time and that we're, um, yeah, have all these things going out and doing all these things, but uh, really <laughs> we're, we're um, in our hotel room and uh, on our computers working, a lot yeah. of the time working, yeah. We're also not just working on YouTube and not just editing uh, videos. There's a lot that we have to do, just the business side of it, like accounting and finances and taxes. And then of course the creating of the content, going out and creating video, photo content and editing it, updating our websites. And someone asked the other day, what kind of work do you do when I say we're working? Uh, planning all the retreats for next year, of future retreats and festivals and coordinating sponsors and brands we work with and attending trainings and, and uh, studying. Yeah, studying messaging you back on your emails on your comments on your dms so for two people since we currently don't have a team or anyone that helps us for two people it's uh, a lot of work maybe we'll have a team um, next year or the, the years after we will see and hire someone but right now it's just us and it's a lot of work for the two of us and so we are pretty busy if you're not uh, posting something or so uh, working most of the time how what do you think about uh, cold showers and cold exposure training we love it we take cold showers um, every day not every day do we start cold, but the majority of the days, but we at least always end cold. So here in Europe right now, I'm actually very happy because it's colder weather out. We're both pretty happy about this. In Thailand, it was very warm and there was no contrast. 
there was no cold water, no cold air, and now we have some cold air and some cold water, so we really like it. We made uh, the cold our friend, and we do cold showers, we do ice baths if we have the option to, and we like being out in the cold now as well. It was not always like this, we really hated the cold, but since we do cold exposure training and breath work, we started to really like it and embrace the, the cold. So we think of it very highly and we recommend you also to look into it or to start taking cold showers every day if you can after your practice. It's also a very good mental challenge. And take slow deep breaths if you do. Yeah. Otherwise you're just hyperventilating in the shower because it's so freaking cold. But yeah, slow deep breaths. <laughs> I think it's easier over time. Yeah. What advice would you give your younger self before you started yoga? Start doing yoga earlier, start meditation earlier. Follow your heart. Don't listen too much to what other people have to say or your society. Keep following your intuition and your heart. It usually knows the right way for you and your mind most of the time doesn't it's based it takes it makes a decision based on other things but your heart is making a decision based on your true self and presence and being and that's usually the right path and so we actually followed our intuition and our feeling most of our life from very early on i would say and we were not yeah. so directed by the mind or what we thought was good. We oftentimes have a feeling about something and then we do it and then we do it 100% and then we do it for a very long time. And sometimes it just it just happens. We wake up like, I want to do this and then we start doing it and we do it for decades and we get really good at it or it's it leads us on a different path of in our life that we did not think about before but we felt is the right one. Will you ever teach at Burning Man when Burning Man is happening again? Uh, yes, we, we will. Yes. We will, absolutely. We are very excited for it. Uh, thank you, Amit, for asking. We actually taught two years ago at Burning Man. We did not teach anything last year. And this year, of course, we also not. Uh, but we are planning on teaching more on the playa next year or the, the years to come. We actually have a lot of ideas for Burning Man and teaching at Burning Man that we don't want to go into detail now, but we have some ideas in our head mm -hmm. that uh, came up because they felt good. And so we want to explore them more and uh, see what we can do. But yes, it's definitely a plan to teach um, in Black Rock City. Yep. Maybe I should uh, give, yeah. And have some fun breathe and flow wolf pack meetups. Right. And go explore and run around on bikes and climb on things and blow bubbles and all that fun stuff. So we'll have a, a pretty fun community, I think, when we do make it to Burning Man. Yeah. When Burning Man happens again. When it happens again, yeah. <laughs> so we are at 15% uh, uh, battery on my laptop. Although it's plugged in, I think the whole thing takes lots of power. So I think that will kind of determine when we end the live stream. Seeing how the battery goes down, I think we maybe have five or ten more minutes max, and then it should be at five percent. I don't want to push it too much and then have a, sh a quick all of a sudden we're gone and it's black. <laughs> we still want to say goodbye to say you. Goodbye. So let's maybe do five more minutes uh, cool. until like 6 15 hour time. Then I think the battery should be dead. And we are very grateful for all the questions that are rolling in. There's literally so many questions that I'm like looking on my tablet right now at. It's it's a lot, and um, we are very sorry if we cannot get to your questions. These these are really good questions, and we hope you dial in again next time so we can answer those. Yes, this is really fun for us. I hope this is fun for you too. And I was just wondering where people are right now because we have people joining from all over the world. So maybe you are at work and working on something, and you have just a tab open. You're just listening, which is fine. <laughs> There's not nothing to see here. So. 
good job uh, doing that that way. I have done that for sure before <laughs> as well, being dialed in into a live stream just with headphones, or maybe you're just enjoying your coffee, or it's morning or evening or bedtime. It's amazing how we can bring all the people in the world together uh, right now in this moment. We have 250 right now dialed in. I think before we had over 300, so it's it's amazing. Thanks, guys, for for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any oh. more? Any more here? Yeah, yeah. I'll ask this one. Okay. Um. So, sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Ev Genly. Ev Genly. Um. He asked, "What kind of books are you into? What are you currently reading? And do you recommend any of them?" Um. So we're actually reading um a few different books right now at the same time, but there are our a uh, top list of books of our favorite books that we always recommend to people and that can also be found in a kit that we put together which again is in the link in the description of all of our YouTube videos um, so when you go to our kit there's um, one that's just called favorite books and I think there's like 20 of them in there now um, that we recommend so I would just say go there and check it out and see what resonates with you since everyone is kind of coming from a different place and space in their life, then maybe you can see a book in there that, that you like and enjoy and has helped us on our journey um, and helped us sort of unlock some things in our life that could also do the same for you. We keep adding books um, as we read. Currently, we read about one book a week because we do a lot of audio books. Yeah, come here. Yeah. So we do uh, lots of audio books currently, and so it's about one book a week right now so we keep adding books to the kit and in general we keep updating the kit too if there's anything useful to add yep. someone asked what are your goals for this channel and uh, do you guys have any plans or are you just going with the flow we are very strategic about the channel we have a lot of ideas that we don't want to mention in detail here we have a strategy for the whole channel we have a vision for the channel for the next year for the next five years and ten years on the kind of content we want to produce so we're not just putting out random videos in for us in our opinion from our view it's a, it's very strategic it might look different from the outside looking at the channel but we have a very clear direction we are moving towards and we are glad that you're part of it and thanks for asking yeah Thanks for supporting us on this on this journey too. It would not be possible without all of you. And the main reminder for us, and then you can continue, is that really the channel is not for us. The channel is for you. Yeah. It's to help you live a better life. It's there to teach you the tools to do that day by day. And so we we are really we're seeing us really in as as of a service for you. And these are our offerings for free on YouTube. And like we said, we are in it for the long run for the next decades. If, uh, yeah, you know, YouTube will remain very stable. So there's really nothing that I can think of that will happen that will disrupt this plan. So we are in it for, for a long time. Yeah. We also have, as Flo mentioned, our one, five, 10 year plan with YouTube and with Breathe and Flow in general, our, our whole business. Um, but on YouTube specifically, we are being very um, strategic about what we're, what programs we're designing. And uh, so we have our next program that we are launching in just a couple of weeks um, or less. By the end of the month, we should be able to put our first one up, our first video. So that program is um, going to be also a seven day program, but it's going to be very different from any other program that we have here on our channel. So we won't give away too much, but it's very different. So, yeah. um, launching yeah. soon. We're excited for that launching soon. And then we will also do a, uh, another program that we're going to be launching for new years and for the month of January. So we're putting together both of those and then, yeah, every, yeah, I don't know, once or twice a year, we'll be putting together um, a larger program. And then depending on how long the program is or how long the videos are within the program, we might have it on YouTube or we might put it on Patreon. Um, but we'll, of course, still be putting a lot of content up on YouTube um, as always. So we got lots of good stuff coming and there's a lot of strategy around it. 
But at the same time, we also go with the flow. We feed off of um, your feedback and what you guys are asking for. And um, I mean, between both of us, we get so many comments, comments, messages and emails and just feedback on our videos for what people are needing and wanting. And so um, that's also why we got the inspiration to do the no wrist yoga class and the yoga for headaches and um, yeah, yoga for back pain, like things like that, because not only maybe we're experiencing it in our own body, but we hear it from you. Um, so yeah, we have a strategy, but at the same time, we, um, we're open to feedback and we want to really provide to you what, what you're seeking. So always feel free to ask if there's uh, anything that you would like us to do more of. Someone besides, asked. besides longer, uh, 60, 60 minute classes. I know just last week we put up my 90 minute class, um, but that's pretty rare for YouTube. So if you want the longer classes, you will go to our Patreon community for that. Someone just asked if, um, uh, Alice, if, uh, we are doing any mm -hmm. food videos, food related videos, uh, we are doing a few, for example, what we eat in a day, but also not too much. Uh, so there will be a little bit more content on the topic, maybe a little bit more content on fasting as well. Uh, but it's not a main priority right now. Um, someone asked, do you believe a basic teacher training is enough to start your teaching journey? Or does one need to accumulate hundreds of hours of training first? You definitely need to do a formal training. The basic training is 200 hours and then you can start teaching which is very important in which we recommend to do that after your training, you start teaching at many different places to gain experience. And you are, although you're teaching, you are always a student. So you will always keep learning. You will keep taking trainings. So as you keep teaching and you gain experience, you also will uh, deepen your knowledge with more trainings. And uh, we still do lots of trainings and always we do every year at least one, two trainings each and uh, in addition to a teaching. And we have our background from yeah, almost five years of teaching daily, sometimes more times, several times daily uh, studio classes while still working full time on the side. So yes, you need to do the basic training and then do teaching to gain experience and also depth, do more trainings. Awesome, oh my gosh, there are so many good questions here. So many good questions, guys sorry guys, if we don't get to your question. You guys yeah. are amazing, you you watching right now are fabulous, fantastic human being. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. And uh, we are a little bit sad, we cannot get to your questions and we, it seems like we're ignoring you, but we, we read almost all of them and we will probably read more um, of them later. But again, sorry if we don't get to it. So maybe just the last few questions. One is, how old are you? <laughs> um, so I'm 35 and you're, I should know, 30. I'm 31. One. And my favorite color is black. <laughs> That's great. My favorite color is Well, today is pink, it's orange. So. Today it's orange. <laughs> And yours is pink. Right. You know, it's like, what's and I'm your, a Gemini what, what, and he's a Pisces. Pisces. Like, what, what's your favorite, you know, kids? Like, what's your favorite color? What's your, <laughs> what's right. your uh, favorite animal? <laughs> yes. How old are you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I like reading and listening to music. <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> great. Um, yes. Is your yoga teacher training recognized by Yoga Alliance? Absolutely. It will be. So we are in the final stages of polishing our manual. So once we submit that, uh, then we have all the other credentials for it. Um, so excited for it. We can't wait yeah. to offer teacher trainings and to make you a yoga teacher. Yeah. So you can get the behind the scenes of yeah. everything, really. Everything. It's all, it's all so much on the surface, especially on YouTube. We really can't dive as deep as we would love to. Um, to, to teach you about yoga. So the teacher training will be a perfect opportunity for that. And the way we're gonna be teaching it will be a month long immersion. So we're not planning on doing like one weekend a month for a full year or anything like that. We are also not planning on doing online. So our teacher training will be for a certified Yoga Alliance 200 hour instructor and it'll be a full month long immersion. 
um, probably on some island somewhere. So uh, we are still um, a couple years away from actually launching it and opening it and having our first um, our first round of students. But the best way to stay up to date with that is again to jump into our newsletter and subscribe there. Um, the link is in our website, and then you'll get all the info when we announce it. And uh, I just saw this question here. If if you cannot wait until we do our training, or in general, we recommend to do several trainings. So it's not that you do one and then that's it. You keep learning, you keep taking trainings. And the question comes up, I would say, almost every day. How do you find uh, training? And it's very important that you resonate with the teacher and that you resonate with the teachings and their opinion and views and methods of teaching. And so once you have, uh, for example, you can go e two ways. You can either have a teacher first and then hopefully they offer trainings. So if you like our style and you want to take become a teacher, then when we offer trainings, you come to our training because you already know us and you already know it will resonate with you and you want to learn how you do all of this, then you come to us. But sometimes you also find a training and you don't know the teacher, so then you would have to look up the teacher, look them up on Facebook and Instagram and their website and maybe YouTube, see their style, see their philosophy, see their personality, decide for yourself if it feels authentic and if you feel good about everything, this is something you really need to go about your feeling then uh, you sign up and you take the training. Know that there's almost never a training that will cover everything 100%. This is why you need to do several trainings and people specialize. You take a general training first and then you can specialize in things or you take several general trainings and you actually cover topics in all these trainings that you did not cover in the other ones. So it's a never ending journey of learning just like life. We are now at 7% battery, so I think maybe one more question, maybe two if it's quick. And then we have to say goodbye. We don't want the laptop to die, and we are also already 75 minutes into the live stream. It's amazing. So fun. That's, we would keep going all night. <laughs> um, we would. What is your plan here? This is how we felt. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Do you have a question? No, not bad. This is how we felt always when we taught yoga classes in the studio. There's never enough time. There's just 60 minutes, maybe 75 or 90 minutes class in a yoga studio when we taught there. Not enough time. On YouTube, it's even less time. And then we started offering workshops. And so three-hour workshops on certain topics and still not enough time because it's so much fun and there's so much to explain. Then we started offering retreats. And even on retreats, although we have five days, six, seven days, Still, sometimes there's not enough time, right? It's still so much we want to share, and there's so many questions. And sorry for touching okay. your face. Uh, so many things we want to talk about. It's it's very challenging. So hopefully, with the teacher training, when we have a full month and 200 hours, then we can hopefully cover everything. And then we see you every day for a, <laughs> a month. How amazing is that? We become really good friends. We have good of co good coffee, and we can share so much and help you on your journey and maybe kick you out uh, help embark you on the journey to become a really good yoga teacher. Sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. Um, what did you find? All right. Another question, which I've seen a few people ask is, are we teaching live classes? Do we teach on live, live classes or zoom classes or anything live on YouTube? And um, unfortunately for you, we do not um, for a few different reasons. Um, but mainly it's because we don't have a permanent home. We live out of our backpacks and everything we own is in our backpack. So um, yeah, of course we're in Germany here for a few weeks. So we could technically find a place that has a wall and good lighting and internet and everything and make it happen. But the amount of stress that it creates an organization that it takes for us and the amount that it costs for us to book um, a bigger Airbnb to have enough space to film um, it's just too much for us to manage right now and too much for us to organize. And so we're putting a lot more energy towards our um, static YouTube videos. So you can go up there and watch on your own time at your own pace. Yeah. And, um, and then you can also pick the class that um, is more in alignment with your level. So we understand that's kind of one of the main reasons we don't do live classes as well is because we 
um, we know that on our channel, there's a very large array um, and spectrum of um, levels that people practice. So we don't want to hype everybody up for an online live class and then they jump in and it's not at their level. It's either too beginner or too advanced. Um, and it's just not meeting meeting people's expectations. Although you know you shouldn't have expectations, but it's, uh, it's just better for us. We've gone back and forth a lot about the topic and we get asked all the time, especially for Instagram Live. Um, but that's sort of a separate topic. We will never do Instagram Live because we don't like teaching on a tiny little two by two screen. And uh, the style that we teach is, um, it's too much to be on a two by two screen. So um, yeah, it just doesn't really resonate with us. We know a lot of people request it and ask it. And we know a lot of people are at home and would love to do live classes with us. So we're sorry, it's just not in alignment with where we're at right now in life and what we're teaching and um, with all the other projects that we have going on. So don't worry, there's still lots of classes that we're pumping out and um, we're still here for you, but just not in a live class kind of way. Well, now it's time to wrap up. Uh, the battery is getting low and- And it's already been- It's already 80 minutes or so. Um, we will maybe schedule more time for the next live stream so you already know you're in for a one or one hour or 90 minute live stream let us know if you should do this more often we are definitely interested in hearing what you think if you should go live and answer your questions more more often sorry if we did not get to your question this time but please come back next time for the next live stream whenever it will happen we will announce it on youtube or instagram or somewhere you will find it and thanks for joining today have a wonderful rest of your day or evening or wherever you are. Take, uh, take it easy. And I think, as always, as we say, with, with love and gratitude. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> take care.